means a lot because as Slate Money listeners might want to know that we'll have an episode on the movie The Insider, which is about big tobacco. Well, the movie about big tobacco got me thinking about big oil. And I feel like it wasn't that long ago that there was reporting and writing about, you know, big oil is going to get like taken down the way big tobacco did. Remember, there was even, I think, a Washington Post story that had, you know, documents from inside the company showing that they know that fossil fuels, you know, uh, cause climate change or whatever. And everyone was like, it's the next, this is it. It's, they're going to get taken down. But I think we could say now that that is not true. Um, and I think it's because everyone depends on oil all the time in a way that no one depended on, you know, cigarettes or opioids or whatever. So it's something I've been thinking about. So think about that. The episode is, I think, coming out in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think the difference, too, in, in terms of whether that idea gets traction is really how the public perceives it as you know a personal safety issue versus uh, how people feel about climate, which to most people is, is kind of an mm. abstraction. Whereas, right. you know, getting cancer from cigarettes is is a little more you, you see it happening in your life with other people. Sometimes. Right. Your, your father has an oxygen tank, so you uh, get it. Yeah. I do yeah. think it, it matters where you live. If you spend a bunch of time in places like Germany and Switzerland, they don't think of carbon emissions and climate change as being an abstraction. They Every time they're forced to get on a plane, they're like, they feel really bad about that. And they're like, if they run a conference, they're like, we're going to have to make sure that the overwhelming majority of people at this conference can get there by train. And like, there is this just, it's the the way of thinking about personal carbon emissions and personal carbon footprint is much more embedded into your day-to-day -day thought than it is with the overwhelming majority of Americans. Well, also, we have, we have a car culture overwhelmingly in a way that European countries generally don't. Yeah. Yeah, you're really dependent on, on cars here, except for you guys, Felix. Except for me, exactly. <laughs> we, we, we Manhattanites, we don't need cars. Um, right. But it's true. There's a part of the world where people really care about this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis, and there's a part of the world where they don't. I think, I mean, we've said stuff like this before, and it's still broadly true, but I think given a lot of the more extreme weather events we've been seeing the past few years, I think more people are coming around to like actually caring about this stuff. Like, you know, when the sky was red in New York. I think most people think global warming is real. We, in that big sort of vague hand wavy, we need to do something about it. Um, and if a politician says something about reducing carbon emissions and saving the planet, they'll nod along and clap and say yes. Um, I, I guess my point is not about that. Um, and, and certainly you're right when extreme weather events happen, people are like, yeah, this is clearly part of, of global climate change. The bigger question is, is more about how salient it is on a day to day basis and how people just think about it as part of their quotidian right. lives. And they don't have much choice. And that's why the oil companies are doing great. We're going to have an ad break and then we're going to talk about something really stupid. 